allowed to elect, uh, attend electronically and be allowed to participate pursuant to the open public meetings law. The public is reminded that civility and decorum will be maintained during the meeting. <coughs> Any contracts awarded at this meeting or between now and the next meeting will be required to comply with the requirements of Public Law 1975, Chapter 127, NJAC 17, colon 27. In accordance with the Fire Prevention Code, be advised that this facility is designed with emergency exits for your safety. Upon exiting the meeting room, they are to your left and to the right. Smoking is not permitted in the municipal building. Please take note that this meeting is being live streamed and videotaped for possible future broadcast on Howell Television. Mr. Vonovich? Present. Ms. Richmond? Present. Mr. Russo? Here. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Here. Mayor Berger? Present. Could we, there is no executive session this evening. That's correct. <clears throat> if we could stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance and then a moment of silence for all the people that we've lost to COVID-19 and to all the first responders that have been so helpful. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. May I have a motion for the minutes of March 16, 2020? I'll make a motion for the minutes of March 16th. May I have a second? I'll second, Mayor. Roll call, Mr. Bonovich? Yes. Ms. Richmond? Yes. Mr. Russo? Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Abstain. Mayor Berger? Yes. Are there any reports from the officials? Yes, Mayor, I have a number of topics to uh, review. Uh, first one uh, on the uh, agenda was posted uh, for the approval of our 2020 budget. I <clears throat> received feedback that the governing body is looking to uh, carry this until a later date, obviously due to the ongoing circumstances to see what kind of impact that this will have on the township financially. So uh, that being said, we will be um, carrying till a later meeting, resolutions uh, number 161, 162, and 163, and also ordinance 20-6. Those, all, all of those items pertain to the budget that will be carried to a future meeting. Um, I was asked to read into the record a uh, statement from our Municipal Alliance. Uh, Feeling sad or overwhelmed during COVID-19, Howell Township Municipal Alliance website and the Friends of the Howell Township Municipal Alliance Facebook page provide a comprehensive current list of mental health and substance use prevention, recovery and treatment resources during the uncertain times of COVID-19 or any time you or a loved one needs support. The resources range from youth and general population helplines to crisis intervention services at the local, state and national levels. Never be afraid to ask for help or seek support. Never be afraid to ask a loved one, friend, or coworker if everything is okay. Social distancing does not put a stop to offering compassion and concern. Uh, I'll post this um, on the Howell website uh, along with the links to the Alliance page and their Facebook page. Um, the next thing, uh, Right before the meeting, I had just received confirmation of our most recent numbers. Uh, as of today at about 4 o'clock, we have 242 confirmed cases of Howell residents and nine cases affecting Farmingdale residents. Uh, we're reporting both because our OEM oversees Farmingdale's as well. You said 242? 242, yes. And that will be published to our website. If it's not already, it will be very shortly. Uh, as of today, uh, the governor had closed all state and county parks, so Howell Township followed suit and closed all municipal parks. Uh, in line with that, I have DPW working throughout the afternoon and tomorrow morning to uh, post barricades and signs to indicate that. Um, our senior center has been receiving a number of donations. Um, I know a few council people, um, Deputy Mayor O'Donnell and Councilman Russo had um, worked on or had obtained some significant financial donations for the senior center. 
Uh, our director, uh, Melanie Decker, has been doing a phenomenal job working with Chris Hill from the PAL, uh, securing food donations, which are being given to, it's split up between the senior center, the pantry, and it supports our seniors or uh, needy families. Uh, additionally, I'd like to comment that Puglisi Egg Farm has lent, lent out their refrigeration systems uh, to allow us to store some of the food products in their refrigerators. So I'd um, like to compliment them publicly. Um, one of the things that's going on, um, myself and the CFO are working on, for the next meeting, there's going to be a resolution uh, for the council to consider. Um, fortunately, this year, with having uh, so little snowfall, our snow trust has built up quite a bit. Um, we'll put a resolution for the council to consider that will allow us to use that for an emergency, um, so namely the COVID crisis. Um, that would make that money available to us for any spending that may need to be done. Uh, currently, we have about $800,000 in that uh, fund. Um, the last time I believe we did so, or Howell did so, was during Hurricane Sandy. Um, so that will be coming up. Uh, also, I know a number of you have been asking about our tax deadlines and do we have the ability to extend it. Um, we as a township do not. We cannot do so legally. We're awaiting direction from the state on that. They would be the ones that uh, could allow that. Um, however, it expended to May 10th. That's yes. like the latest date. Yes. Um, but we can't, we as a township that. cannot extend it further. Um, you'll notice a resolution on tonight's agenda that allows the <clears throat> tax collector to accept less than a hundred percent payment. Uh, that's something our tax collector was actually working on prior to this emergency happening, but it may lend some relief to our taxpayers regardless. Uh, this was another issue that uh, different philosophies between our old tax collector and the new one um, where people can make a partial payment if they're able to do so. Uh, the only restriction would be uh, any interest would have to be paid in full and that gets paid up front. So um, and that is all I have. Okay. So at this point, we do the hearing of citizens. Hearing of citizens, yes. <clears throat> okay. We've had a few um, comments. Um, Mark Parisi had emailed regarding a typographical error in the ordinance that's being considered for tonight. That was actually caught by Joe Clark, and um, a revised copy was being circulated. So thank you for noticing that. Um, Mrs. Barbara Dixel uh, had said, what is the Board of Education paying in rent to the township for moving into the municipal building? She wants them to pay their fair share. The seniors cannot afford to live here uh, due to the Board of Ed tax increases this year. Uh, the Board of Education is not paying us rent. They are paying us uh, an amount that is equal to what they were getting for um, their energy credits in the old building. So it's approximately $30,000 that will be used towards mm -hmm. utilities. Uh, in addition to, we're already discussing a number of uh, shared service agreements that unfortunately have been a little bit delayed due to other priorities in the recent weeks. Um, Joan Osborne, the environmental chair, had asked, does the council and manager have any information on whether we can anticipate the farmer's market beginning on May 31st, 2020, as is currently planned? Should the Farmers Market Association continue to seek vendors and plan for the start date, or is it the council's preference that we wait until mid-May to see where we're at before deciding anything? I believe we need to wait until we are allowed to be in a group setting. Uh, I would agree. None of us so know when this is going to end. So until social distancing so. has stopped, we cannot move forward. Right. So I would recommend the same. Encourage them to hold off on seeking additional vendors at this Agreed. point. And that includes the meetings too. Yes, I've, yeah. okay. I've suspended all meetings meeting. of all boards and commissions um, until further notice. Sounds good. Uh, the planning board did have a meeting last week um, with a very limited agenda. They just um, covered some resolutions and 
approved minutes, but they were not taking on any new projects or hearing existing ones. Uh, and then I have a number of questions from Tina Smilek. Uh, why wasn't there any discussion between council concerning the motion for approving the resolutions? It's, I believe she's referring to the last council meeting. Uh, it seems Councilman Bonovich had a concern with resolution 9A4 that he wanted to separate out from the grouping of resolutions for discussion. What is the reason that those that voted yes and rushed this through did not care what Bono, Councilman Bonovich is, is excuse me, Councilman Bonovich's issue was. Uh, what was Councilman Bonovich's issue with 9A4? Uh, if anyone wants to comment on any of these, feel free to speak up. Well, I think Councilman Bonovich said. Yeah. Can, we, can you hear us, Mr. Bonovich? Councilman Bonovich, <laughs> do you want to comment on what your issue was with 9A4 during the last meeting? I was just looking for some clarification from Andy Bayer prior to the meeting that we didn't receive. Okay. So maybe, Andy, you can clarify about adding to the water service area with those five parcels. Okay. Is that in connection with F.P. Howell or with TURPAC? I don't, is that from the last meeting? Tur Tur TURPAC, there, there was an additional five parcels being added to the water service area that was not part of the co oh. original color agreement. Correct. That what I was apprised is, is that the developers council contacted the township about uh, uh, adding those parcels to the sewer service area. There would be not for any addition. There would be no additional units, housing units, but for the purpose of uh, another ingress and egress from the proposed project and. That was the and that was the basis of the request. All right. Do we have Do we have that in writing that there's going to be no additional uh, building on those parcels? Should we? Yes. So the uh, issue, uh, John, would be, and what we would eventually, what we would have to do is, is there would have to be putting aside the sewer service, the bar the township would have to enter into an amended. I, well, I have the representation from council in an email as to the purpose, but what we would need to do to protect the township is to enter into a amended developer's agreement that sets forth that, and we would uh, also have to consider amending the zoning for the site, uh, again, subject to the restrictions of those lots. It would only be for ingress and egress to that proposed project. Okay, that, that's so the reason why I wanted to separate it. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Okay. Uh, next, uh, again, this is still Tina Smilek. After reviewing the last meeting, I would like to know if the Deputy Mayor purposely motioned to approve 9A7 through 9A16, including 9B1, and then adding 9A2 and disregarding 9A3 through 9A6. It seems there was no vote on 9A3 through 9A6. Are they not approved? Uh, Joe, would you like to address that? Sure. They are approved, and this is why. I looked at the meeting tape today, and it's at about the 25-minute mark on the YouTube video that it starts. Deputy Mayor made a motion uh, to approve 9A7 through 9A16 and 9B1. Um, at that point, Councilman Bonovich had interjected because um, I don't think that he was able to hear as well last time. I think that he had moved to um, approve 9A2 through 9A16, excluding 9A4, but including 9B1. As I explained in my email yesterday, that when there's a motion and a second pending, another motion is improper. A motion to amend can be made, but it has to specifically state that. So Councilman Bonovich is, and I know it's all, this is all very picky and granular, but this is where we're heading with some of this stuff this year. Um, the motion to amend has to be called a motion to amend. Then there's got to be a second for that motion, and then there's got to be a vote on that. And if it passes, then the original motion it sought to amend is considered amended. Then there's debate or discussion on that motion. None of that happened. The long and short of it is basically um, Deputy Mayor amended her own motion, 
which she is able to do without a motion to amend on her own. She can amend, restate, do whatever she wants to her own motion up until the point the motion question is stated by the chair. It wasn't. So the deputy mayor's <coughs> ultimate motion was to approve 982 through 9816, including 9B1. Councilwoman Richmond said, indicated that she had seconded that. There was a vote on it. It passed. We then later had to, because 982, it passed because, by a vote of 3 to 2. 982 was a financial resolution that required four votes. So we peeled that back out. Uh, motion to reconsider, that passed finally. So all of the, all of the agenda items passed. And that's my long-winded Robert Rules picky explanation of how it works. Thank you, Joe. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next, she states, on top of that, do the professionals sitting on the side truly know how to fix the issues, or is this just another instance of employees unsure how to react and not wanting to be the next victim of the political game being played by some current and past council members? Slow down and understand what you are making a motion on and voting on. Listen to each other's concerns. Hastily pushing things through ends up with mistakes, as you have once again proved. Uh, then she asked, my questions on 9A3 and 9, through 9A4 were never answered. What is the closest public water and sewer connection to FP Howell and Turpac Road group projects? I understand the property owners are responsible for the water and sewer and their developments but are they required to run the water and sewer lines on the road's closest connections? I do not want to see... What's the response to that? I, I was going to finish this because oh, there's okay. several. I do not want to see us take on another water or sewer project that we, the taxpayers, will have to fund. Uh, with Jim Herman not there, who is overseeing all these projects? Uh, Joe, you want to comment on the closest utilities? Sure. So I spoke with uh, Justin Yost today. And with regard to the Turpac group, they've met with MRSA and were told they would have, they, Turpac group, would have to extend the sewer starting just south of the Havens Bridge Road Bridge. The proposed sewer would connect to MRSA's interceptor main near the bridge and extend south to the Casino Drive intersection, then west to the proposed site. Justin's understanding is this new main would be installed by the developer and become part of Howell's sewer system. For water, NJAW, New Jersey American Water, has an 18-inch main on Casino Drive in front of the property that can be tapped for the new development. NJAW will ultimately have to review the size of the proposed project and may require Turpac Group to install new mains in West Farms Road to Route 9 to loop the water system. So that's Turpac Road. With regard to F.P. Howell, um, they're going to connect their sewer at West 5th, which was recently installed as part of the Freewood Acres project. And with regard to the water, they're talking to, again, New Jersey American Water. There's water at Sunnyside and Grist Mill. Um, New Jersey American Water may require F.P. Howell to loop the system as well, which prevents a stub end and, you know, a, sort of a dead end on the line. It's expensive, and so obviously that's something that F.P. Howell and N.J. American Water are working through. So there's the nearest water and sewer connections. <clears throat> okay. And as far as who's overseeing the project now, uh, it's a combination. Um, we still have Andy Bayer involved, and myself, Joe Clark, and then Justin Yost is the Deputy Director of Community Development. Uh, he's involved with that end of things with the sewer and water. Uh, who's overseeing um, Joe, this, this, this is Andy Bayer. I couldn't hear everything uh, Mr. Clark said, but is there still an open question, Joe, about the responsibility of the developer to... Uh, be responsible for the cost, not to, to for the responsible for the cost of installation and sewer connection. Cost of installation of what? The water and sewer? Right. Well, well I, I just I just didn't hear everything you had said. I apologize, but I just wanted to make it clear that under the in, in connect, Tina had asked a question in connection with FP Howell and the sewer connection and the developer's agreement, the off-site developer's agreement the council had previously approved 
makes it clear that the developer is responsible uh, to pay for the connection, even with the uh, township project that's that's there. So I right. just wanted to make, I, I thought that was an open or a question Tina had as well. Yeah, and that's correct. That's right. Okay, next question. Question is who is overseeing the Freewood Acres sewer project, and do you have a status update? Again, it's Justin Yost as the deputy director of community development. As far as an update, the majority of the sewer main has been installed for Freewood Acres. Final testing is being completed this week, and all residents should be able to begin connecting next week. Uh, only the residents on the west side um, of Route 9 have been able to connect at this point. The water company is completing laterals on Georgia Tavern Road this week. We will be repaving Georgia Tavern uh, Road and open to traffic once the lateral work is completed. Uh, so that's the update on that. Our next question, when is Jim Herman going to be back at work and who's running community development right now? Again, there will be no comment on Jim Herman's status as it's personnel issue. And Justin Yost is running the department as the deputy director. Next, she asks, will Walter's group affordable housing have to put in put applications on hold until after the pandemic. Still haven't received an answer as if veterans will have preference. I want to make sure residents are made aware of this as soon as it is available. Uh, I'm sure that they are modifying how they're operating, but I believe Governor Murphy has indicated that he still wants to move forward with affordable housing projects wherever available, especially in light of the current economy status. Um, veterans do have a preference as part of the marketing plan. Um, the Walters group was supposed to hold an informational session here at town hall, uh, that had to be canceled obviously because of the situation. I'm not sure how they're rolling out their plan currently. And, uh, she also had a number of budget questions, but indicated that, um, Luke could answer them by email if he'd like since we're not having that hearing tonight. And also we just got in a comment from Kathy Novak. With the state and Monmouth County Parks closed, people will be flooding the beautiful Howell Parks. Please consider closing the Howell Parks for everyone's safety. Thank you, Kathy Novak. As I indicated, our parks were closed as of earlier this afternoon. Uh, and that is all the comments that I've received thus far. Okay. Brian, can, excuse me, Mayor. Um, yes. As far as the parks are concerned, we kind of had our parks pretty much closed anyway, right? <clears throat> we had followed the state's lead. Right. Um, they were open for passive recreation, walking, biking, things like that, as long as people were maintaining their social distance. Uh, we did have, like, playground equipment, uh, basketball courts, things like that closed off, um, as people would obviously be in close proximity in those locations. But it seems that in light of that, people are still not following the social distancing guidelines. So uh, that's why I opted to follow the state's lead earlier this afternoon and just close the parks completely. And will that help in the aid of our uh, renovating the parks and in, in our, our re renovating and updating yeah, the parks? Yeah, um, there will yeah, still good. be work going on. Yeah. Um, would you like an update on all that? Um, DPW has completed most of the work. Uh, that they were going to be doing, which was a lot of the removal, um, removal of old equipment, things like that. And we have a number of equipment pieces that have been ordered and we're waiting delivery and installation, but that will still be moving ahead at this point in time anyway. Okay, great. And um, I have a question regarding, oh. sorry, go ahead, Mayor, I'm sorry. Aren't we going to vote at this point? on the consent agenda? Um, if you'd like, or, uh, you know, I was, we kind of skipped over the discussion, so. Oh, okay. Number seven, so. Excuse me then, I'm nope, sorry, I didn't no realize I did that. We're hoping not to have a lot of discussion though, I think. <laughs> um, so um, I have a question regarding um, initiatives that um, you're gonna be putting into place, anticipating, obviously, um, things that are going on with COVID. So with that, um, would you be able to, when and if you have that prepared, can you supply the council with a, a prioritized list? And then maybe we can take a look at it and, and, and rank it and to see what 
may or may not be of essential or, or not down the road. In reference to jobs, uh, you know, projects? Projects, jobs, um, yeah, all of that stuff. So we can just be a little proactive and take a peek and to have a discussion. I mean, in the meantime, like I've already stopped all non-essential spending uh, and we are not filling any uh, full-time positions or doing any hiring at this point, mm -hmm. uh, even for vacancies or approved positions. We put a hold on that for now. Okay. That was all I had. I just had a couple things. Um, Brian, you referenced the donations that were made. Yes. I just want to honor and mention Mr. Dick Clark of Howell, who donated $1,000. Really uh, great. And that actually uh, resulted in another a buddy of mine calling me to donate additional money. So kindness does breed kindness. And it's really good to see. I want to thank the volunteers who've been helping me deliver food to seniors. Uh, Billy Stanton, Rob Seaman, John Leggio was with me over the weekend, helped me out. And Anna Marie Scottson, uh, two weeks ago, was one of the first volunteers that reached out with her own money, went to Target, uh, bought supplies, and uh, helped out a senior in need. There was a recent act of kindness that I spoke to uh, uh, one of the mothers of these individuals, ShopRite employees in Howell. There was a gentleman who, uh, I guess his card wasn't working, uh, elderly gentleman, and he had a bunch of food, and the um, employees, young employees, I think they were 18 years old, got together and paid out of their own pocket for this uh, individual's food, and their names are Jenna, I'm going to butcher these last names, by the way, Je Jenna uh, uh, Mar Marcia, Brandon, Alex, and Jenna Mar Morcigilio, <laughs> M-O-R-C-I-G-L-I-O. Thank you very much, all of you. Uh, really, and I'm Italian too. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, what you did was outstanding, and and uh, it's really, really great to see that. Uh, I just wanted to recognize some acts of kindness during this difficult time. Thank you. That's all. Well, I too have somebody that made a donation. It's one of the people that sit on one of our boards, although I haven't received permission to share his name. So I look at this as truly an act of selflessness because when somebody doesn't ask to be thanked, I think that when they do something, it is uh, even more pure. And in this time, you see people reaching out to neighbors, friends, people they don't even know. Um, so it's always amazing to see um, the goodness in people and the goodness in the people in hell, especially. After all the years that I've been here, I must say that <clears throat> I find things are done without being asked to do them frequently, and that really means that people are working from the heart and from their soul. So we thank you. And of course, our employees are just unbelievably uh, motivated. Um, couple that I've dealt with, <clears throat> personally, I did a food delivery from the senior center to a, a family that was truly in need. And um, I, I just cannot believe when, when the door opened at the senior center, although I couldn't go in, obviously, the busyness inside that building was sort of overwhelming. The cleaning, the gathering of the food, putting things together for other people. Um, it's a real pleasure to be a part of this family in Hal. So thank you to everybody. It's ironic, today is uh, World Health Day, oh, that's <laughs> April right. 7th. So social that's distancing right. is a big deal. This is not a vacation. I've been hearing so many people that I have spoken to today, their kids are bicycling together. I mean, together, together. I said, this is not a play date. This is not a play time. So it's really important, even though I know, I, I'm losing my mind. There's five adults in my house. And I have to say, you can't get away from anybody. And I have a, my house is not small. I can imagine having to try and teach these little kids and then try to keep them occupied. But out there, moms, please, you must keep them with your family. It's don't, we shouldn't be mixing families. Um, it's very important. We don't want to share germs. We want to make sure. And if we go out, I mean, at this point, they're asking us to wear masks at this point when you go out, if you're going shopping. So please. If you have a mask, put it on and gloves. Um, you can make them yourself. They show you how to do it on YouTube. So, I mean, that's a great thing. The employees that have been working are amazing. And out, the first responders, I have to say, 
outstanding job, as always. As always, I, Hal is always on top. So we have to thank every employee. And um, for me, I just want to say stay healthy. Remember everybody out there, um, there are more negatives at this point than there are positive tests, so that's a plus. Um, and there are only more tests because we keep testing more and more people. So understand if our numbers are high, it's because we're testing more people than in other countries. And I've looked at that. So please don't freak out about that. Um, Spain did not test as many um, citizens as we have. So that's the difference there. Social distancing, gloves, hand washing, elbow bumps, and be safe out there. Be safe. So, that being right. said, please. Mayor, may I? Who is that? Councilman Bonner. Oh, good. I like there's a voice. I yeah, I, I'm having a hard time hearing again. Um, I, I just have, I, first I want to thank the governing body, all of us, for postponing the budget. Um, we don't, you know, these are uncharted waters, as we all know. But um, I do want to get some clarification on some dates. Uh, maybe Lou could help with this, or Joe, or Brian yourself. You know, since we all postponed this, this budget and there was uh, a bill passed and signed by Governor Murphy, um, I'm looking for the number right now, um, 38, A3851, it permits the extension of budget adoption, but it doesn't signify a date. Is there any important dates that we should know? I know we introduced, so we're not going to receive any, any penalties, but when, you know, when does off financial year start and end, is there an absolute deadline normally without this extension? I read somewhere about August 10th. Is it now even pushed further than that? I know the state is now in the, uh, September 30th. So I don't know if that, re you know, that relates to us as well. So I don't know if we have any clarification on this extension. Well, our budget here. I, I so go ahead, Logan. Sure. So, um, so the the township operates on a calendar year uh, fiscal year. So we are January first uh, to to December thirtieth. Uh, the original deadlines that the local government services uh, division had uh, had revised um, the uh, the deadline to adopt um, your budget was originally April thirtieth, or okay. or or the or the next meeting thereafter. Um, has now been pushed to May 30th or the next council meeting uh, thereafter. Um, the state's fiscal year ends on June 30th, which they pushed forward three months to September 30th. Um, and uh, that's, uh, that's some of the deadlines that, that were pushed forward. Um, the uh, local government services will still review budgets and, and, and still um, try to get that work out so that we may be able to, you know, try to send out tax bills for the August 1st deadline, but it's, um, you know, obviously will be a a, a, a a trying task. So as of today, it's supposed to be adopted by April 30th, but pushed to May 30th. Is that what you're saying? Correct. The date, the date prior to the extension for for the for for the adoption of budgets was April 30th. That date has now changed to May 30th or, or, or the next available council meeting thereafter. All right, so with the mayor, and I guess Joe spoke of earlier, we could, ex and, and Brian as well, we could, ex right now, we could extend tax payments without a penalty from May 1 to May 10th, but we should adopt a budget by May 30th, correct? So we could actually see our delinquency rate in those first 10 days and kind of take it from there, correct? Because this budget might need to be appended. That is correct. Okay. All right, thank you, Lou. Okay. Consent agenda. Do we have a motion? Yes, I would make a motion to approve uh, 9A1 through 9B2. Second. 9A1 through 9B2. Yeah, I just want to make sure we have all the numbers included in there. I will make a motion, a second. 
Let me be clear. I'm making a second motion <laughs> to <laughs> Deputy Mayor's first. Thank you. Roll call, Mr. Bonovich. Uh, Brian, can you repeat that? It oh, broke yes. up for me, please. We're on consent agenda. There was repeat. a motion for the consent agenda and the motions by the Deputy Mayor, seconded by Councilwoman Richmond. So it's 9A1 through 9A7, including motions 9B1 and 9B2? That's correct. Okay. Yes. Ms. Richmond? Yes. Mr. Russo? Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. We are introducing this ordinance, correct? Yes. Uh, actually, this, yes. Would someone like to read it? My link would work. <laughs> Does it? Here. You better clean your screen when I'm done. <laughs> Motion to introduce ordinance number 020-7 on first reading by title and to order the same to be published in the 410-2020 issue of the Asbury Park Press together with notice of its introduction and passage on first reading by title, and that it will be further considered for final passage after public hearing at a meeting of the Township Council to be held on 4-21-20 at 7.30 p.m. PM prevailing time in the Municipal Building. Thank you. I'll second that. Title of ordinance. An ordinance amending Chapter 7-10, Turn Prohibitions of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Powell, to add Chapter 7-10.4, entitled Right Turn on Red Prohibition and Schedule 19. Roll call, Mr. Bonovich? Yes. Ms. Richmond? Yes. Mr. Russo? Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. And then at this point, the resolutions are... Uh, everything under the budget is being tabled okay. uh, to a later meeting, so now we are to number 12 on the agenda. Any unfinished business? Uh, go ahead. You know you go first, Deputy Mayor. Uh, I was just, um, Mr. Clark, I'd reached out to you about emergency resolution uh, concerning um, people in stores wearing a mask and gloves. I thought Hoboken had done something similar. However, um, I don't know if it would be legal or appropriate. And if it is not, could we at least uh, strongly encourage uh, stores to engage in a safer practice when they're dealing with the public? Yeah, I think, I think we can and should encourage them to do that. I'm looking at the issue. Um, the question is whether or not any action we take would run afoul of Governor Murphy's Executive Order 108, Correct. Um, which prohibits us from doing anything contrary or you know, in contravention of anything that he's ordered. And so we kind of get a look and see, is there something in there? It's not expressed, so it's just something I'm trying to drill down on. If we can do it by resolution or by ordinance, then, you know, we would consider it. But I think just as a good, safe practice for both their workers and the public, we, we should encourage them to do it. And how could we, and how are we going to go about encouraging um, employees in their stores to be practicing safe, you know, safe practice? How would, can we convey that to employees? Yes, how are we going to get the message out to stores in general? Oh, to the stores. Yes. Well, um, that would most likely be communicated through our OEM, who has been going out and visiting stores, as mm -hmm. well as code enforcement. Um, we've had a number of complaints that we have received about non-essential non businesses operating, so mm -hmm. um, they've had primary contact through that. So we could roll it out that way, as well as through our social media and website. So OEM and social media would be our fastest uh, avenue? Yes. All right, so we can do that today? Tomorrow. <laughs> I'll accept They're tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I just feel it's important to keep emphasizing, um, you know, almost everybody is aware of the seriousness, but occasionally you see somebody, you know, handing back change with no gloves on. Um, I've actually stopped using money. I'm just using my debit card because I'm the only one touching it. So I'm even getting nervous about using money. But if somebody's handing back, and I've seen it, they're handing back a, you know, a customer change and dollar bills uh, in return without a glove on, it's a little disheartening to think that now both people um, are really, you know, could be endangered. So whatever we can do, I think, would be excellent. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay. Um, so I know some people may think this is not the time and the place, but the census is is due. And, and oh, excellent. I, I thank you. And I just think that since we are home looking for something to do, Definitely I think it's excellent. a great opportunity to um, fill out your census. It, and it's and it's just so beneficial to our township and funding and grants and 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 all that good stuff. So. Um, if you can just take a minute and look on the computer somewhere, I'm sure you can find it, or your mail. Um, it takes about three and a half minutes to fill out, not even. Um, I'm pretty sure that most of us have three and a half minutes these days. Um, so, and, and I, I did read where the deadline is not April 1st. It's just that everything that is happening in your household prior to April 1st is what they're recording. So it, it is important that we do the census, take the time. <clears throat> Um, also, I, I had asked um, last week for some people to sit with their children and write letters to our seniors. Um, we were trying to come up with some sort of initiative to help the lonely seniors who don't have smartphones, who don't have um, family, um, and I think, kind of think if it's important that the kids learn how to write a letter. So I had asked some family members to um, sit with their child, write a little handwritten letter, just a couple of things about them, even if it's a picture, their name and their age, and then if they can scan it and then they can email it to me um, and I will get them to a couple of assisted living homes, some seniors. My grandma's 104, God bless wow. her. I saw her yesterday <laughs> um, and I know how much those little things mean um, and I had tried to reach out to the senior center but they are way overwhelmed and they're doing a great job. So if we could um, spread that word and if anybody would like to write a letter to any kind of senior or veteran, I would I would personally greatly appreciate that. So so we should forward this, the um, letters to you. And PJN411 at yahoo.com or you can email me and I can give you that information. So um, just something to brighten them and keep them a little busy as hard as that is. And with, with what the mayor had said earlier, teachers, we miss you. <laughs> um, and parents, thank you so much. And all the healthcare providers and um, anybody working in the healthcare industry down to the custodians, people cleaning the rooms. Um, we, we do. We, we know what you guys are doing and, and it's not taken lightly. And I also have to commend the governing body. We're working together. We're getting messages out there. Um, and, and we're working really hard to try to keep everybody safe. And, and I thank everybody for working together on this. I have to comment. So I, I pronounced schoology, schoology. Oh. So it's schoology, I believe. Oh. Is that correct? Schoology. Schoology. Mm -hmm. Let okay, so, I, uh, <laughs> please. Schoology. Um, and so, I also mentioned that you can go on the website for Schoology, but you should also contact the teachers themselves. Have the children contact the teacher, or you contact the teacher. It'll get your, your you'll get your resolution much, much quicker. Um, the Easter Bunny, the ride by, is April, April 11th. I said September yeah. 11th. I, it oh. just... I don't know. That was a, a bad, a bad like yeah. Yeah. connection. But <laughs> so it is April 11th on Saturday, and if you go on the website, uh, all the locations are on the web where they're going to be going. They're going through all the different little areas plus the surrounding locations. That's great. Um, what else was there? I think that was it? So let me give you the website. I think I've memorized it by now. Hmm. www.twp.com h o w e l l dot n j dot u s forward slash c o v i d nineteen. So if you have any questions, uh, there's updates so all the time. Every t they're really being really like almost in real time. We're getting the updates. So please go on the website and get your information. Can I just um, sorry as you're saying things, things are running through my head. Um, I also want to thank the professionals. And um, Lou and 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 Brian, the, the budget. We know that it was it was set, and we we you know we thought we were there, and here we are. So thank you for that. Also, Krista Riddle. I know she left a statement, yes. but um, she she she's amazing. She posts all the time, and I don't. I know people are thinking, oh, please stop posting, but um, mm -mm. the information it's very she's important. sharing is good information, and it's it's warranted during these times of mental health. Um, I worry about my students who are behavioral students. I know that's important. I read up on it so I can help them. Um, and I, I just also want to plead to the um, public, please be very understanding as to what is going on. We up here and over there, our, our professionals, we are doing our best. This is such a fluid, um, changing every day, and, and 
I love seeing the kindness, but there are some people that are, are they find the negative at everything, but just understand we are really, truly doing the best for our community. Um, we care about our community. We care about each other, P politics aside, and I've seen that come through with a lot of people. But please, before you post something or say something, think about who it affects and who it might hurt, especially during these times when people are financially um, distraught and, and everything else, losing their jobs, not being able to file unemployment. I just, I just want you to remember that, and, and, and um, I, I, I can't say it anymore. Just please remember to be kind. I think, you know, right. sometimes you forget a smile. That's all it simple. takes. Simple. A simple smile is an act Thank of kindness, you. and That's sometimes right. you just don't realize it. That's right. right. You know. I will tell you, walking because I've been, I was walking. It was so great because it's been nice out. But at this point, and people, when you say good morning, sometimes they look at you like huh? startled. Oh my goodness, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's so true. It's so true. So even, it's even even may I have to tell you, I, I go to the store and I'm always wanting to show my kids to help somebody, like with an older couple, help them with their bags, and I'm like finding myself saying. Don't help those people, and I'm going. Oh, that's not what I, I know. you know. So I'm like, it goes against I'll, 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 I'll walk values. away, and I'll be just. Is that are you guys okay? Can you know whatever, and they'll smile and we'll wave, and but it's so hard not to hold the door for somebody or. Well, that you but, can do. Well, it depends on how close they get to you and the oh, single lines and we'll the stepping on the tape. Soon. Anyway, yeah. so just remember those little <laughs> things, like like the mayor said, a smile, a wave, a, a hello, good morning. It, it, it's so important since we can't do those other things that we're it used to. It doesn't cost you anything. Nothing. Thank you. I have two. Very quick items, uh, Mayor. Um, Brian, I emailed you about the website improvements. Yes, I forwarded that to IT. They're okay. looking into the capabilities of our website. And just for those who are watching, uh, you know, kind of trying to do a, a, a separate page within the website where it's easier, where it's more accessible. And when I say it, I mean the information regarding COVID. Um, I'm thinking three tab, I think I emailed you the three tab idea, the updates, how you can help, because we've received a lot of, um, from a lot of people asking how, the, you know, how they can be a part, how they can either donate or help give their time. And I think it's a good idea to have one central location where they can put their information in and we can, and we can uh, get the information out to people who need it. And then a resources tab with all the websites from the state, the county, OEM, right, we can do that. And you said it to IT, right? IT? Yes. Okay. And then... I'd You're just talking about lumping them all together on a page. Yeah, on one page, yeah. Because I'm, I'm looking at it, and it's the way it's set up now, it it's could be confusing to people you know, who are you know, less tech savvy. So, um, Unemployment benefits. <laughs> I, I've received a lot of phone calls about oh, people who are yeah. having trouble. Getting on. Yeah, so I mean, right here. an issue, you know, for those of you who are watching, I mean, obviously, and if you've been through it, um, people are having difficulty even getting somebody on the, on the other line, or if they're doing it online, they can't get in. So they're also getting non-working. It's non-working number. Non-working exactly. Yeah, so there was something. Overwhelmed. That's why it's it's something put out about like I guess uh, allotted times by social security number. Yep. Um, that was last week, and they're still having problems. It's changing. I believe me. Mine was supposed to be Sunday. Now it's Tuesday. So it's it's again another thing that is so forever changing. Is there any way, Brian? Um, we can send a letter from the governing body to Senator Singer or our assemblyman and just say, listen, can, I mean, I don't even know what we can do here, but just kind of shout from, from the rafters here, hey, listen, our people need help. Yes. All right. Thank you, Brian. With, with that said, tomorrow, what, tomorrow at 4.30 p.m., Senator Gopal is having a, web, uh, a Facebook Live detailing how, um, Self-employed, 1099 employees, they could actually uh, receive unemployment benefits. So that's tomorrow, 4:30, on Senator Gopal's Facebook. Okay. Interesting. So with, with the website, with the website stuff that Tommy was saying, Brian, I have a question. Um, I had gotten a call from a resident who, unfortunately, doesn't fall in the seniors because she's not that old, but she's home and she's. Why do you look at me when you? No, say I, that? Wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't. Sorry. No, I was looking at Evelyn actually. Um, so, so they fall in between that. Um, that not seniors, so they can't get f food provided with them through the seniors Meals on Wheels. They've been instructed to stay home. Um, they're having trouble. Obviously, a lot of people are having trouble having food services delivery because they're so overwhelmed. Right. I had asked her for her list. I told her I'd go get it for her, whatever. Um, she's Her and her husband are homebound because they're ill. Um, I told her to go on the website. Um, I just wasn't sure what to tell her. I know we do alerts on the email, but she's not socially, you know, she's not te technical savvy. So I had kind of picked 
people's brains and to say, if you weren't on the internet and you didn't know what was going on, what would you do? Then that's the people I think we're, we're missing in the town. So I don't know, putting an ad in the paper, do we have a robocall that can reach people? I, I mean, I feel like we, we the people that. Sure. that don't have social media, and maybe it's a lot, a lot. I mean, 52,000 residents here, but I think we're missing a little bit of those people who... Channel like 77 the, also. Like the I, 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 did, I told you that, yeah. but, you know, uh, the grocery shopping, the helping, just yeah. the little things that I think that these people who are those in between, these tweeners, I guess you want to call them, right. are missing. So is there something that we could put out there in the newspaper or, like he said, Channel 77? Well, we have put things on Channel 77. Okay. We do have our Nixle alert system that residents would have to sign up for. Right. But mm -hmm. that would be... Internet. Uh, that's email. Well, it's an automated call. Yeah. Oh, an automated receive. call, too. Okay. So, you know, if you want to assist them to get signed up with that... Okay. Uh, I can do that. At least they would get those notifications. And you can use a home phone number. You can use a cell phone. Okay. Anything. That's good. Um, yeah, we can look into a newspaper if you'd like. I, I don't, I, I'm out. just, it's, again, I'm just something just, that we can think about. This has been so constantly changing, you know, we'll, by the time we notify a paper and put something out, yeah, that information I know, may have changed. I know, I know. I mean, obviously so. we know social media and, and internet is the best way to communicate, but we forget that there are some people who, right. who don't, who don't utilize. I mean, we do have a phone number too that we had advertised. Unfortunately, the best way we get it out is through the internet, but also we had put it out through Nixel. Um, and the letters from the governing body that have been published uh, periodically, um, they would hear a recorded message what it was those uh, letters that were being read into okay. the recording. So um, those people could call into that number as well. Okay. Um, and we have tried getting that number out to the senior communities um, that may not be as tech savvy. Right. What about going through the associations? Could we contact all the associations of the, com the senior communities and then but let these are probably people yeah. that are not, you know what I mean? They're, well, they're, they might be though. Yeah. No. And they well, may have family like, and stuff like that. But I, there I, are associations in many of the places. So if we have that list, maybe we could just send out a letter. Saying, I believe OEM has been in contact with yeah, the senior great. associations. Thank you. So. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Brian. Yes. Um, you know, you mentioned the phone number and Tommy mentioned the website and stuff like that. What, what's the procedure now that we shut down the parks? Um, you know, I don't want, I have a feeling that you're going to get inundated, all the counselors with emails when they do see people in the parks. What's the procedure? I don't want everyone calling 911. Uh, they can call the non-emergency number for the police department and report it. And the what, you have to have that number? My fans so you can uh, publish that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, just one quick thing. In terms, I say quick. In terms of the website, um, Councilman Russo, um, I had chatted with uh, Chris Hill from PAL, and he's very interested in trying to, uh, you know, also work closely, you know, with the council and with, he works with everybody. However, in terms of the buttons that we could put on the website, um, his expertise, he's so, uh, he's just so good at getting people to volunteer and how he focuses the volunteerism and gets everybody, you know, in a certain space and doing the best job possible. Um, I was wondering if IT could speak to um, Chris Hill and asking what buttons, so to speak, might be, uh, you know, the type that he's used to seeing that are very successful because uh, he wants to help out in any way he can. I know he spoke to uh, Krista Riddle about doing some kind of a segment on mental health. So if we could sort of speak to him as well, I think that it would expedite the results that everybody wants. So if that's possible, IT might be able to speak with him. Sure. I'm sure they, they talk to him all the time, but especially okay. in, in light of the, uh, you know, what we're trying to do. Okay. Thanks. I yes. will make a motion. Wait, I got, wait, oh, wait, wait, I'm sorry, wait. I'm sorry. The next meeting, um, so I want to say it again, the Easter ride-by, the Easter bunny ride-by, is Saturday, April 11th, and the next meeting is Tuesday, April 21st, 2020. The executive session is at 6.30, and the regular session is at 7.30. Um, I guess at this point, I want to say Happy Easter, um, Happy Passover, Happy Pesach. Um, everybody enjoy your families during this time. And I'll Stay accept well. a motion. Stay well, everyone. I will make a motion to end this meeting. Second. Mr. Bonovich? Yes. 
Ms. Richmond? Yes. Mr. Russo? Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. 